The Gerstlauer Eurofighter dates all the way back to 2003, and ever since, this has been a very popular option for small parks. These are usually short, they have beyond vertical drops, they have inversions, and some of them even have launches. It's a big thrill in a small package, and for as many small parks that have bought one, the big parks came to play also, and some of these are monsters. There are 25 out there, and they vary in size and quality. Today, let's put all bias aside and see which one is the tallest, fastest, longest, best paced, and rank them up based on prime ride time. These are the world's Gerstlauer Eurofighters, by the numbers. If you're new to the series, prime ride time starts when the car starts to pick up speed off the lift, and it ends when it hits the final brakes. For launch coasters, the clock starts when the launch kicks in. Mid-course brake runs are left into the prime ride time, but if it slows down too much, it'll hurt the pacing. Some of these have a launch and then a lift hill in the middle of the ride, and that lift is taken out of the prime ride time. With the help of Google Maps, but not the Pythagorean theorem this time, I was able to take out the lift, station, and brakes from the overall length. All of these lifts are vertical, so the Pythagorean theorem is once again useless. I mentioned there are 25 Eurofighters, but there are four models that have exact clones. For time's sake, and for sanity's sake, I'm combining these clones into one entry. In 25th place with 16 seconds is Defiance at Glenwood Caverns, Glenwood Springs, Colorado. This just opened in 2022, built on the side of a mountain, so you have a great view, but not much time to enjoy it. This has 16 seconds of ride time and only 921 feet of track. Second to last, having just a twisted hill, a banana roll, and an inline twist after the first drop. That 110 foot drop is pretty good. Diving off that cliff and using the terrain to extend the drop, ranking fourth, and that top speed of 56 miles an hour is fifth. Good size, no mid course, short length. That's a great recipe for pacing, and this is up at number one at 57.6 feet per second. Tied for 23rd with 20 seconds is the 320 model. Adrenaline peak at Oaks Park, Portland, Oregon and Hydras at Casino Pier, Seaside Heights, New Jersey. Oaks Park is tiny, and Casino Pier is, well, a pier. So these are very compact, and no other Eurofighter is shorter at 788 feet. They're also tied for last place in height, still standing a decent 72 feet tall, and tied for 15th in speed at 45 miles an hour. It covers a loop, a cutback, a heartline roll, and doing so at 39.4 feet per second, down in 21st place. Tied for 20th with 21 seconds is the 380 model, Iron Shark at Galveston Pleasure Pier, Galveston, Texas, Tantrum at Six Flags Darien Lake, Darien Center, New York, and Crater at Parque del Café in Colombia. These are definitely bigger, standing 100 feet which is tied for 6, maxes out at 52 miles an hour which is 10th, but still doesn't cover a full 1,000 feet of track, finishing 20th. It has three unique inversions, an Immelman, a cutback, and an incline loop, covering its course pretty well without a mid-course brake run, finishing 10th in pacing. In 19th place with 22 seconds is Vertica at La Recre des Three Curis in France. This is one of the newer ones, built back in 2020 and it's a custom model. It stands 88.6 feet tall, that's near the middle in 12th, almost hits 50 miles an hour which is tied for 13th, up at 11th in length, going into just two inversions, a loop and a corkscrew. But if you're looking for hang time, you're not going to find it here. This rips through its course at almost 54 feet per second, ranking second in pacing. Tied for 13th with 23 seconds is Eurofighter at Zoo Safari in Italy. This is a very compact custom model, standing 82 feet tall, that's 15th, but it's in an 8-way tie for last place in speed at 43.5 miles an hour. For as compact as this is, it has three inversions, a loop, a cutback, and a heartline roll, kind of similar to Adrenaline Peak and Hydrus, but this has almost 300 more feet of track and ranks 14th. With more height but somehow less speed, it covers track faster also, up in 9th place. Tied for 13th with 23 seconds is the 320 plus model. Falcon at Duinrel in the Netherlands. Predator at IMG Worlds of Adventure in Dubai. Rage at Adventure Island in the UK. Serpent at Sindabad in Morocco. And Untamed at Canopy Lake Park in New Hampshire. With five installations, this is by far the most cloned model. Rage being the first one in 2007 and Predator being the last one in 2016. These are not very tall. 17th place with 72.2 feet. Tied for last in speed at 43.5 miles an hour and they all have less than 1,000 feet of prime ride track, ranking 15th. Once again, having a loop, a cutback, and a heartline roll. They're also not amazing when it comes to pacing. 41.7 feet per second in 14th place. Being compact and cloned, you can expect these to be on the smaller side. In 12th place with 28 seconds is Vild Svenet at Bonbonland in Denmark. Here you have the original, opening in 2003. 
It was also the first coaster to go beyond vertical. It's 72 feet tall. That's tied for last. Tops out at 45 miles an hour, tied for 15th. And although it only has one loop, and that's the only inversion, it's got a lot of twists and turns and covers 1,164 feet of track, near the middle in 12th place. This one does have a mid-course brake run, so its 41.6 feet per second is down in 19th place. In 11th place with 31 seconds is Hurricane at Volantis in Germany. This one is definitely different, more of a linear layout than a compact square. It stands 105 feet tall, that's 5th. Hits 52.8 feet per second, tied for 7th. And it has almost 1,500 feet of prime ride track, good for 9th. It covers 5 inversions, a 0G roll, Cobra roll, and interlocking course screws. Even with a mid-course brake run and big inversions, it's up at 7th in pacing. In 10th place with 33 seconds is Speed No Limits at Oakwood in the UK. Just like Hurricane, this has a very linear out and back layout, standing almost 115 feet tall, good for 3rd place, hitting 59 miles an hour, that's 4th. And it starts off with a big airtime hill in a high bank turn, going into a loop, a mid-course brake run, and a heartline roll that starts your winding descent down to the ground. With just over 1,700 feet of prime ride track, it's in 8th place, and it's up at 4th in pacing at almost 52 feet per second. In 9th place with 34 seconds is Fluke von Novograd at Hansa Park in Germany. This one has a very extensive dark ride section before the action starts. I obviously left this out of the prime ride time, but you can't consider it ride time because of the show. This is the first Eurofighter that has a launch, 0 to 62 in 1.4 seconds, tied for first place in speed. This has a full ride sequence, including a heartline roll before it even hits a lift hill, and that's where I stopped the clock. You got 25 seconds in the first part, and only 9 seconds in the second part. You rise up 131 feet in the dark, that's second place, and dive down into a very short sequence before the brakes. Overall, with 1,776 feet of prime ride track, it's 6th place in length, and with all that height and speed, it's up at 3rd in pacing, covering 52.2 feet per second. In 8th place with 38 seconds is Daredevil Dive at Six Flags Over Georgia. Six Flags only bought one of these, and here it is in Austell, Georgia. This seems like one of the bigger ones, but it's really not. It's 95 feet tall, good for 11th place. 10th in speed and 7th in length. It has a twisted compact layout, a dive loop, an Immelman, and a heartline roll to finish, broken up by a mid-course brake run. It covers 46.4 feet per second, which is 8th place. So all in all, it's pretty consistent, living at the edge of the top 3rd in all these stats. In 7th place with 39 seconds is SpongeBob SquarePants Rock Bottom Plunge at Nickelodeon Universe, Bloomington, Minnesota. When Camp Snoopy was rethemed in Nickelodeon in 2008, they wanted a compact thrill coaster, and this is what they got. Being indoors, and being inside the Mall of America, they couldn't go too crazy with the stats. SpongeBob stands 74 and a half feet tall, 16th place, tied for last with a 43.5 mile an hour top speed, but it has a pretty good length at 1161 feet, near the middle in 13th place. It has a loop and a heartline roll and a mid-course brake run. It takes that heartline roll very slow, and that mid-course brake run hits hard. It really crawls through the second half, so no surprise, it's dead last in pacing at 29.8 feet per second. In 6th place with 44 seconds is Abyss at Adventure World in Australia. Most of the great coasters in Australia are on the east coast, but if you find your way to the west side, check out Adventure World. This also has a more linear layout, starting with a 100 foot drop, tied for 6, tied for 7th in speed at 52.8 miles an hour, and covers 3 inversions, an Immelman, a dive loop, and it also has an inline twist in the dark. This has a 16 second dark ride section before the lift, and everything after the big drop is 28 seconds. Overall, it covers almost 1,800 feet of track, which is 5th, but it's down at 20th in pacing, not covering track all that fast in the dark. In 5th place with 47 seconds is Saw the Ride at Thorpe Park in the UK. This is similar to Abyss, starting with a dark ride section and an inline twist, but this section covers almost half the ride time at 21 seconds. It then rises up 100 feet, tied for 6, hits 55 miles an hour, also 6, and like Abyss, it has an Immelman and a dive loop. That second half covers 26 seconds, and overall, this has 2,020 feet of track, which is third. It's also a couple feet per second better than Abyss in pacing, breaking up at 13th. In fourth place with 48 seconds is Mystery Mine at Dollywood, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. This is the only Eurofighter that had to be broken up into three sections. There's a drop out of the station, into the darkness, and you get a good solid two seconds of ride time before it slows down, going up the first small lift. It meanders around that first half, then it gets serious climbing its final lift indoors, rising up 85.3 feet, which is 13th, hitting its top speed at the end of the ride, 43 and a half miles an hour, which is tied for last, and into its only two inversions, a heartline roll and a dive loop. With almost 1,500 feet of track, it's 10th place, but with all its speed coming in the last 10 seconds of the ride, with the first 38 seconds being pretty slow, it's second to last in pacing at 30.6 feet per second. 
Tied for second with 55 seconds is the 1000 model. Takabisha at Fujiku Highland in Japan and TMNT Shellraiser at Nickelodeon Universe, East Rutherford, New Jersey. Shellraiser has a drop that's half a degree steeper than Takabisha. At 121.5 degrees, it's the steepest in the world, but the rest of the ride is the same. These start with a dip and a heartline roll before its launch, 0 to 62 in 2 seconds. That's tied for first with Fluke von Novgorod, but that launch is more powerful, reaching that speed in just 1.4 seconds. That first half is 36 seconds, featuring big inversions, a corkscrew, a banana roll, and another corkscrew. Then it stops and rises up 141 feet. That's also first place. After that steep drop, it goes into three more inversions, seven total, a dive loop, a top hat, then an Immelman. This is a long ride at 2,753 feet, over 700 feet longer than Saw. That was the only coaster with more than 2,000 feet of prime ride track. However, those big inversions don't play well with pacing, and this drops down to fifth place at just over 50 feet per second. In first place with 61 seconds is Typhoon at Babianland in Belgium. This one is definitely unique, despite being near the middle on height and speed. 84.3 feet in 14th place, 49.7 miles an hour and tied for 13th. But this has four mid-course brake runs. It has a drop, a loop, and then it twists up into a brake run, going into a double heartline roll, then another brake run. And then it's all about dives, helices, another roll, and more brake runs. It's a long ride, obviously. Fourth place and just shy of 2,000 feet. But with those high, slow elements and brake runs, it's all the way down at third to last in pacing, covering only 32.4 feet per second. That's a wrap on the world's Gerstlauer Eurofighters, by the numbers. Let me know if anything here surprised you or confirmed something you already knew. Of the 25, 12 of these have a clone, four models having more than one, the 320 and 1000 model having just two, the 380 model having three, and the 320 plus model having five. Everything else is custom, which is nice to see, considering how clonable these can be, being compact and friendly to flat plots of land. Before you go, don't forget to drop a like. And if you're new here and love coasters, please give me a sub. I have a playlist with other videos in this format. Also, check out my links below for my Discord server, and my second channel where I post copyright-free off-ride footage, and my baseball channel if you're a baseball fan like me. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.